Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Feeling stuck in a tough situation? There's a way out. How do you get out of difficult situations? Well, Apostle Joshua Selman offers powerful insights. Discover the biblical principles that can guide you through life's challenges. Learn how faith and action can lift you out of any hardship. Rise above your struggles and walk into a new season of breakthrough. Apostle Joshua Selman, guiding you to overcome and thrive. See, and his ability to ask. Seventh observation. Please write this down. You're going to learn something very powerful. Are we learning so far? Rise up and walk. Verse 7. Now, pay attention to this observation. His remaining in that condition was no longer an issue of his foundation or upbringing. His remaining from the time he recognized that he had the power to see, from the time he recognized that he had the power to ask, his remaining in that condition was no longer an issue of his foundation nor an issue of his upbringing, but his mentality. Did you get that? From the time he discovered that he had the ability to see, to change his perception, from the time he discovered that he had the ability to ask and it shall be given to him, it was no longer an issue of his foundation, an issue of his upbringing, an issue of his auntie, his uncle, an issue of the job he lost. Please look up. From the time the word of God comes to you, to realize that your destiny depends on you and God primarily, blaming parents, blaming curses, blaming whatever becomes null and void from that time. If the word of liberation has not come, are we together? Pardon can be granted unto you to blame every other thing and every other person. But from the day you discover I have the power to see, I can change my perception, I can change my understanding. What I had that was a wrong ideology can be corrected. What I saw wrongly, I can see more perfectly and accurately. And that you have the ability to ask Number one, to ask the father of fathers. And number two, to ask men. From the day you recognize that you have the ability to change your perception and the ability to ask, the calamity you are in becomes your fault. Let me tell you a few things you can ask for. You can ask questions that lead to knowledge that leads to your liberty. Are we together now? Yeah. The centurion asked a question when Philip joined his chariot. He said, tell me please, of whom was this man speaking about? Himself or another? Dr. Mudok will say, a question is the seed for an answer. You are not deserving of an answer if you don't ask questions. Is it not in your Bible? Call on to me and I will answer you. Is that in your Bible? I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hear me. From the day you realize that you have the power to see, ministry should not be this small. Business should not be this small. From the day you recognize that you are a giant in the spirit, from the day Gideon, you realize that your prophetic destiny is to be a mighty man of valor and that you have the power to ask. Blaming anybody or blaming any condition does not suffice from that point. From the point this man realized that he had the power to see and the power to ask, his remaining in that condition became a product of his mentality. Now, pay attention please. Do you know that the man started asking 
but there was problem with the asking he was asking according to his mentality he never asked for healing because he did not know healing was possible so he asked but he asked for arms there are many people asking for more inferior things for instance asking god for money when you should ask for wisdom asking god for the life of your enemies when you should ask him for an understanding heart when solomon asked god for an understanding heart god made he told him other things he would have asked for you would have asked for the life of your enemies even if your enemies are dead it does not make you successful he said leave the issue of enemy give me an understanding heart could it be that that many of you the reason why your destiny has not scaled to a level is because you have been asking but you are asking the wrong things which are a product of your mentality where you should ask for understanding you have been asking for money are we together hmm. it matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know it matters what you ask and what you ask depends on what you know what you ask depends on what you know what you ask depends on what you know hallelujah a buffet can be prepared in front of you and out of fear or whatever it is you may not even know that anything you ask on that table will be given to you even if you want little of everything but you can sit down there salivating and you are angry and the buffet was made for you you can take water take juice and you're just watching and everything is there. all things are yours but you only ask according to knowledge the prayer for light is a powerful prayer because you only arise and shine in this kingdom when your light comes when your light comes what you ask for is a picture of your mentality what you ask for i told you years ago that pat robertson of blessed memory now i watched one of his broadcasts and i remember hearing him pray and he said as a little child that when he was about to start ministry he asked the lord for three things one wisdom two favor three the anointing of the holy spirit i said wow so these are the spiritual resources that would turn an ordinary man to rise and have a global broadcast station i went to god i started changing the things i was asking for lord in a similar vein give me wisdom give me favor give me the anointing of the holy spirit i'm glad that i asked that i'm still asking that until today because it can be in measure jesus increased in wisdom jesus increased in favor yesterday's dimension of wisdom may not be able to confront tomorrow's challenges and so my asking remains but i ask because i know that god is abba pata his father he's a giver and that the quality of fathers is that they give without withholding provided it will not destroy you he said ye have not because ye ask not many of you have not been able to ask for help because you don't know the value of help you've not asked for wisdom because you've not learned the value of wisdom you've not asked for knowledge because you've not seen the value of light ye have not because ye ask not is someone learning this is very powerful from the time you realize the ability to change your mindset your perception and the ability to ask your predicaments remain your fault not god's fault not the fault of yesterday not the fault of your foundation can i give you the eighth observation now we get to peter finally acts chapter 3 and verse 4 or 6 let's try 6 okay well 4 is fine so finally we get to the point in the story where peter arrives i hope you know that peter had been seeing that man every day because they went to pray every day and the man was laid there every day but on this certain day the bible says back down to verse 3 please who seeing peter and john about to go into the temple now please look up 
The fact that Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have. What did the man see in these two people that made him isolate everybody to ask these two? Because they clearly, that they said, they, maybe they dress well, I don't know. But seeing the right people was the God factor in this miracle. How do you isolate two people out of a crowd of people thronging in to pray? There are things only God can do. But when your mindset, the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. The miracle could not come until his mentality changed. Let me say that again. The mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk. Don't you bother about the ability. That is God's business. But the mentality is your responsibility. The ability to prosper cannot come from you. But the mentality to prosper, knowing its purpose and its dynamics is your responsibility. Increase, church growth, that one is not your business. It is God that brings the increase. But the mentality to be a pastor after God's heart, a teaching priest to love, to teach, to lay down your life for your sheep, that one is your own responsibility. Can I tell you the truth? When mentality is intact, power will not be deficient. When mentality is intact, power will not be deficient. Back to verse 3. Let's connect the dots now. Who seen Peter? Seeing Peter. I like this. Was he not seeing them every day? There is a kind of seeing. God had walked upon his mind. He had partnered with God looking at the beautiful gate. Can I tell you the truth? The beautiful gate is training you to see Peter. <laughs> the beautiful gate, if you know how to draw lessons, you know how to train yourself at the beautiful gate, then you are ready to see Peter and John. The company will come one day but you must learn to see things a certain way. The anointing, the lifting will come. If you cannot appreciate the beautiful gate, it cannot talk, it cannot speak, it can't lay hands. But there is a reason why God kept leading the people to drop the man there in front of the beautiful gate. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for arms. At least let's give him credit. He's known how to start asking. At least he's known now that when you are silent, your life goes the direction of your silence. He's begun to open his mouth and take responsibility. At least he's learned now that for everyone that asketh, he receiveth. Verse 4. Do you know that Peter's first assignment was not to be a miracle worker? Peter's first assignment was to be a teaching priest. Let me show you Peter's sermon. Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us verse 5 and he gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them verse 6 and Peter said silver and gold I do not have but why are you only asking for silver and gold have you been taught that there are other things you can ask for let me help you you can ask that a name come to you and cause you to rise up and walk. That there are other requests that are nobler than asking for silver and gold. That was Peter's sermon. The man never knew that you could ask beyond silver and gold. The man never knew that if you ask beyond silver and gold, it will still be granted. Why ask for silver and gold when the power to rise up and walk that even cost you needing the silver and gold can still be solved? Why ask for rent alone when God can give you wisdom? Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. I 
understand you praying for a job but have you tried praying for destiny helpers do you not know that that table can also offer you that you keep a job for me or you keep destiny helpers i will choose destiny helpers a thousand times because when you find the heart of a man he also opens his hands towards you listen i know you have been asking but i'm teaching you by this mystery that your asking is a product of your mentality some of you have been asking god for things he's committed to answering but how long will you keep collecting silver and gold when there is the ability to rise up and walk the bible says he asked peter that was his day that was his moment peter said if i leave this man this way I have not validated my apostolic ministry and I will give you pastors according to my heart. They will help to re-edit the things you ask so that you will ask of things that have weightier spiritual value. Weightier spiritual value. Instead of asking for church members, ask for the anointing. Genuine anointing to be a blessing. Genuine power to convey the word of God with fire and light, with signs following. You have asked for a congregation you don't have space for. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. some of you every miracle service here's your list not to insult you but to show you you need to grow god give me a car a car let somebody deposit one million or ten million in my bank account at the man many of you are just like him you are asking you pray for hours but the things you are asking do not have weight in the spirit you are asking for very small things people are asking for nations people are asking for territories men like John Knox said give me Scotland a, a whole territory give me Scotland they were apportioning nations and taking it by faith Father, as I go for this meeting, I'm praying. Please let me not be ashamed. Let at least one person be healed. Please let people know I am called. And God says, this is all. Whereas there are people saying, Lord, place a grace upon my life that will cause kings and nobles to come from every nation, like the queen of Sheba, to come and hear the wisdom of the spirit that nations will be saved in one day. Man of God, stop asking for mundane things. Ask for things that pertain unto power. Ask for spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. Spiritual resources. The capital that buys influence. The capital that buys money. The capital that buys time. The capital that buys the loyalty of men. The capital that buys longevity. Superior graces. This is what champions pray for in the spirit. Are we together? Please sit down. So Peter was teaching the man. Peter taught him that what he was asking for was not the only thing available to be received. This was Peter's sermon. Peter saw the condition of that man. Look at me. Do you know for a long time, I taught as I read my Bible, I've grown myself many years i've read this scripture i don't know how many times but i thought peter saying silver and gold i do not have 
was a degradation to himself. I used to think so. That Peter meant I don't have money in my pocket. Oh shame Peter. Until I found out that what Peter was saying is I've gone to a realm where I don't need to have silver and gold. I've, 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 I have other superior spiritual resources. If I am called an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask me for silver and gold, you didn't place enough demand on that grace. What is silver and gold? That's what Peter was saying. I used to think years ago that it was a sign of poverty. No, no, no. It was not a sign of poverty, ladies and gentlemen. Not the early church. He was showing that there is a realm a man can be in. Are we together? It's a grace for sufficiency where you command when God makes you a captain over his inheritance everywhere you go there are resources that wait for you because there is a grace that commands it and he said please sir give me silver and gold and he said young man there are things that were given to us by Jesus he didn't give us silver and gold no not after three and a half years of mentorship by the Messiah. If at the end of Jesus' mentorship, all he did was share money and go to heaven, he failed. Are we together? Silver and gold, I do not have. But don't be discouraged. It doesn't mean I don't have. It just means I don't have those mundane things. I have something superior. This that I have is what I give. Every man gives what he has. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Rise up and thrive. Rise up and excel. Rise up and move to new prophetic horizons. He says, such as I have, this is what I have. I cannot give you silver and gold. Thieves can steal it. It can perish. You can lose it. You can be careless. You can invest wrongly and the money will go. But there is something I can give you that no man can take from you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I give you the ability, he said. It's an ability. It's not just a proclamation. I place upon your life, he's saying, an ability to rise up and walk. Listen, rise up and walk means rise up above your yesterday. Rise up above your foundations. He did not just say walk. You cannot walk until you rise up. Nobody walks seated. You can crawl when you sit. But the first condition to walk is to rise up. I impart upon you stamina. He says, to look at yesterday and not let it swallow you again. I do something to your mindset and impart grace upon you. That was what Peter gave the man. Don't ask me for silver and gold. Don't just ask me for money to pay rent. That may solve a temporal problem. But you are the first person in your family. Out of 20 people, you need more than silver and gold. What you need is the ability to rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Walk out of where? Listen, look at me. Let me tell you another way of saying rise up and walk. Are you ready? Lazarus, come forth. Because you don't bury a dead man standing. Lazarus, even though you are dead, come forth. Lazarus had to rise up. And the Bible says he came out even though with grave clothes he came out hmm. the man in Acts chapter 3 was not the first man to rise up and walk the disciples had seen many people rise up and walk they saw the widow at Nain they saw her son rise up and walk They've seen many people rise up and walk. Let me tell you, 
it takes stamina to rise up it takes grace to rise up ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and the spirit entered me verse 2 he says when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet rise up and walk is an impartation rise up and walk is a release of grace that is time for you to stop crying sitting in self-pity rise up and walk is someone learning listen to me knowledge is what makes your praying your asking most rewarding knowledge is what makes your praying and your asking most rewarding the man kept asking for arms he would have dropped five or ten shekels he would have said thank you but he would have remained there one thing i know for sure is that if that man did not receive the ability to rise up and walk according to the law of men his helpers would have been tired one day provided they are men because the bible says even the youth will be weary there are times your greatest helpers your helpers are ushers until you meet the helper they help you to meet the helper when you meet the helper don't waste that opportunity rise up and walk is better than begging for arms begging for silver and gold write this down the ninth observation and then I pull a few things together and we pray the ninth observation from this scripture are you ready verse 7 give us 7 please the Bible says Peter came after educating him and said such as I have verse 6 give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk verse 7 was a shock to me because if you don't read well you will think the guy obeyed he did not obey he wanted to but something kept him down he couldn't stand and so the power of God could not move do you know how embarrassing it would be that after coming to teach the truth nothing but the truth you now tell people rise up and walk and there are no testimonies this was what happened in Peter's conference after telling the man rise up and walk by the next Sunday there was no testimony in this instance two weeks later no testimony and Peter says something is wrong let's go back to the drawing board and he found out that the name of Jesus as powerful as it is but without a step of faith from the one wanting to receive remains impotent even though it was the real Jesus but because the man did not take any action of faith the name the power of God was present to heal as you will see shortly and Peter said let me help him and he took him by the right hand helping him to act and lifted him up the Bible says immediately the power was waiting for obedience the power was waiting for obedience immediately my God so if the man sat down there for two more weeks the power will wait there for two more weeks and it will look as if the word the name of Jesus did not carry power immediately his feet and ankle bones received what received when God opened my eyes to see this I thought it was only a human being who receives with the mind look at what the Bible says received that a man's feet can receive a man's ankle can receive a man's finances can receive a man every part of a man's life can receive it did not say the man it says his feet and his ankle receive strength receive strength and immediately verse, verse, verse 8 now the Bible says he leaping leaping he stood up and he walked I hope you know that even the walking is a miracle it's not only the healing that was a miracle 
he had never walked in his life. Mommy, if you give birth to a baby who rolls from the hospital bed and just when you think the baby is going to fall, you just see the baby stand and says, good morning, mommy. <laughs> you will call it reincarnation and run out of that place. Are we together? Even Jesus did not walk as a baby. So for the man to have risen and then the Bible says he leaping stood and walked. This is very powerful. He leaping stood and walked. Write this down please everyone. The name of Jesus without faith on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The name of Jesus without faith on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The name of Jesus without faith, obedience on the part of the receiver will fail to deliver results. The power of God only moved when the man moved. The power of God only moved when the man moved. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of God only moved when the man moved. When men take actions of faith, the power of God and all the resources of heaven are released to back them. The power of God only moved when the man moved. Are we together? Now, let me summarize a few things for you. You can write now. Rise up and walk, number one, is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new prophetic seasons. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call. It's not just a caption of a message. It's a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons, to open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny. Rise up and walk is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons to open up new chapters concerning your life and destiny and if you wish to add to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits rise up and walk again is a prophetic call to partner with God and to step into new seasons to step into new chapters concerning your life and destiny to step into new horizons of kingdom exploits that's the first summary of this entire discourse it's important for you to not just be excited but to understand what God is doing here. Rise up and walk is a call that you have remained at a level spiritually, financially. You have remained at a level. There's still an old chapter lingering around your life and God is challenging you to rise to new horizons. For someone, rise up and walk can mean step into the next chapter of your calling. For someone, rise up and walk can mean make notable progress and advancement void of excuses for someone rise up and walk and mean press to know God at a deeper level for someone rise up and walk and mean contend for higher levels of grace whatever that means to you the message tonight is rise up and walk to not give flimsy excuses again You've prayed for too many sick people and there's nobody who is killed. Stop giving excuses. You have the power to see and you have the power to ask. Ask for the ancient parts. There are jars of this oil of healing loitering around the body of Christ. When you are hungry enough and even humble to be carried, one day you will meet Peter. One day you will meet John. And the day you meet them, don't ask for silver and gold. Ask for the ability to rise up and walk.
Are we together? The first summary is that God is calling us. Hmm. As I prepared my notes, I took out time to pray for myself. And I said, Lord, thank you for what you have done in my life. But I'll be the first recipient of this message. Thank God for the level of the anointing you have brought me. But it's time for us to do business in deep waters. Rise up and walk. It's time to take nations. It's time to celebrate weightier testimonies, manifestations of the hand of God. Are we together now? Yes. You're a man of God here. It's time to press for greater levels of accuracy. It's time to contend for the faith. It's time to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Participate. Partner with God to stop men from doubting whether you are called or not. Tell yourself, I will never go for any meeting and afterwards, people are just escorting you out because you are a total waste of their time. As they share the grace, they have to apologize for bringing you because you came and said nonsense and wasted time. Summary number two. The mentality to rise up and walk is your own part, your own responsibility. While the ability to rise up and walk is God's part. I'm summarizing this discussion now. Then I release that grace upon you. I'm summarizing this discussion. Haven't shown you about nine observations by the Spirit as the light from this story. Summary number one is that to rise up and walk is a prophetic call. It's a call to be tired of your He will supply your responsibility to labor in the spirit to submit yourself to to learning labor and the of correcting your perception of having a higher most mentality while the ability to while you wait for the hand of God to be revealed in your life while you wait for the hand of God to be revealed in your life labor through the word to build the mentality that both attracts and preserves the miracle while you wait for the moment the period the time when the hand of God will be revealed like the man waited for when he will meet with Peter or John or any representative of the power of God for that matter you have a responsibility to labor through the word labor through the word to build the mentality that can attract and preserve the miracle while you are waiting for the destiny helper to be used by God to help your finances buy the truth buy books listen to the sermons get the mentality that will make you not to waste 10 million make you not to waste 100 million it is not when the money arrives you start learning what to do with it I told you the mentality to rise up and walk is what attracts the ability to rise up and walk and that is not God's responsibility so the man was being kept at the beautiful gate as a clue by the spirit son it may not have been your your own making your own fault but keep learning how to look I place the beautiful gate before you to start helping you know that if you can focus on the beautiful gate you will be able to focus on Peter and John when you see them and that when you learn to fasten your eyes on them then the power of God can flow through you while you wait for the day you will encounter a man of God to lay hands on you go and learn the things that make ministry work go and buy books from seasoned men and women of God that can teach you how to do ministry with integrity while you are waiting for the day the prophetic anointing the apostolic anointing the teaching grace will come learn on character learn on the fruit of the spirit 
while you are waiting to receive that impartation God will not fast for you God will not wake up and pray for you you obtain grace and do the enlarging of your have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior then say this short prayer Lord I admit I am a sinner I need and want your forgiveness I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!